Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to talk about remodels. Um, I know everyone loves real estate and everyone loves uh, remodels, whether they're staying in a house, buying a house or selling a house. But um, just start off and kind of tell us who you are and, and what you do. Uh, my name is Mike Aguayo. Um, I own Apex Classic Construction and um, I do remodels and also ground ups um, as needed. Um, sometimes they're pretty extensive and sometimes we do just a small little bathroom remodel. Um, but I've been in the industry for over 20 years and I've done mostly custom builds and during that time, uh, it kind of got me into bathroom kitchen remodels just to kind of keep everything moving. And it's just something that uh, me and my team really love to do. Well, and I have a bunch of questions about like what's going on in the industry, but I wanted to kind of okay. start off with the fun stuff. So you gave me a bunch of construction pictures for us to just look through. So let me show some of those. So walk me through. I have a few. I think you have like four or five different construction pictures um, for each job or whatever. So just just talk me through some of this. Yeah, uh, this one was obviously, as you could tell, that shower would not be very fun to take a shower in. So um, it, when I met with the homeowner, they had this as a rental and they were moving back into it and they realized that this was not going to work. And what can we do was the question. So what we did, we opened it up for them. We got rid of the tub. We made it very open. We This isn't a fully finished. We we ended up putting just a half glass in. They didn't need a door. Um, and we ended up with some lights above it. This is almost finished. Um, and actually, I, as of uh, last week, we did just finish this one and I don't have the pictures for it yet. But um, she was very happy that when she got in, she wasn't bumping her shoulders as she's trying to shower. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And this is a, yeah, this is obviously a big deal just for comfort, for, for, for resale, for everything. So, right. Okay. This one I also really love. So tell me about this kitchen remodel. Uh, this kitchen remodel, it was, it's not a, a big living space in general. Um, but this one here was very closed in because there was a peninsula crossing the front of it. And we opened that up. We took out the pantry and we did pantry cabinets um, and opened it up to the living room. And with that, we were able to add more lighting, um, do the cabinets all the way across. Obviously, this one's not finished yet either um, in that picture. But we added these countertops and it just really kind of set off this kitchen. It opened up and made them feel like they had a brand new house. Um, th this was one. It was about a about a six week project on that one. And a lot of that had to do with the cabinets. <laughs> Yep, that, that, I know the cabinets makes or breaks the deal on everything. Right. So what about this one was pretty good too. So good kitchen. Yep, and th this one, I mean, I looked at it when I first walked in and I was like, what do you want to do? Because it's very livable how it is. And um, they said, we want to open it up. We want to get rid of the second island. Um, we want to just make everything flow. And so this is what we did. <laughs> Open it up. We, you know, we converted everything that was there into a very open space. We removed the wall that would be on the left-hand side. It was load-bearing, so we had to leave a post, but we were able to open it up. And um, she has a, a young daughter, and she actually really loved this because she's like, everywhere I go, there's no hiding. You know, everything was opened up for her. And obviously, I mean, you get the waterfall countertop edge or on the island there um, that makes a big difference just in the looks and obviously you could see it's still in the construction stages but um, clean up that floor cleaned up the rest of the way and it was almost like a showpiece <laughs> absolutely I, I, uh, I never would have this that, that one surprised me I didn't know those two pictures were connected all right this next one this is a close-up but before I show the next one just tell me about what you did here um, well, as you can see, it's really tight, really dated. Um, anytime you get a lot of that tile, you also get a lot of grime. Uh, and then you start to see age even more. So we decided to pull it all apart. <laughs> Obviously, owner agreed that what we were doing. Pull it apart, open it up, put a um, freestanding tub, um, just make the tile flow up throughout this whole thing. And um, 
then put frameless glass. Um, it may be semi frameless glass, but either way, it was wide open with very yeah. Just it's a semi frameless glass. We see those little the little bit of hardware there, um, and this was the finished product. <laughs> That is beautiful. Yeah, so, yeah. To be able to have that eye and do that is incredible. Yeah, thanks. And and this was fun too, also to be able to make that happen. Uh, where the kitchen looked like it was fairly nice, this was the master bath in there. And we opened that up as well, kind of the same idea. We just wanted to make sure that everything flowed, everything was a little bit cleaner. We ended up doing glass, you know, the frameless glass on this one as well. Um, but that's right before we did the frameless glass on here and just made it very clean looking. Well, there's not, they're not glamour shots. These are construction pictures of what everything is. Yeah. Like that's just incredible. And so, um, yeah, everyone loves seeing those. So thank you so much. Well, and then, so what do you see when people are looking at remodeling areas? What are the most popular, popular remodeled areas? I think you could probably tell by the pictures what are the most popular <laughs> kitchens, master bath, and then, well, Kitchens, master bath are usually what everyone wants. They may go kitchen first and they may go kitchen and master bath, but as soon as they do, it's almost always the secondary bath comes right behind it. Once they realize the difference that they, that it makes in their living. Well, and I'm glad people do this because a lot of people, anytime we're on a listing appointment or whatever, they'll ask from the real estate side, what gives you the most value and your kitchen, your master bath will always give you the most value, maybe a main living area, maybe the backyard um, depending on what you do there. And there's no people will ask, well, how much it depends. I mean, I've seen some of them give you a 70% return on investment. I've seen some 140%. It just, um, it helps itself faster without question. But if you're going to those four main areas, most of the time you're getting a lot more of your money that you put in a lot more than what you put into it. And you get to enjoy it if you're staying there. Right. The yeah. other thing that I was going to mention too, is that we have, um, uh, an article that talks about the three, four, five of staging talks about the three subliminal um, things that sell your house, the four main areas, which we just discussed, and then the five upgrades that sell your house. And so whether you're looking at granite countertops, which is a big deal, paint, flooring, fixtures, all those are, are things that really help sell your house and that are a big deal. So I, that's why when you show all these things, I'm like, yes, this is what they're looking at. This is what they're buying. So um a lot, right. of, a lot of what I do is right at that stage, just bought or have been there for a while and are going to sell, or if they don't remodel, then they have to move because they're ready for something new. That's a lot of what my business revolves around. I, I can totally see that. So, and you take care of people amazingly, by the way. So um, tell me what's going on in the, in the construction world right now with labor and materials. I know that's a big question. That's, that's a big question with a not as fun answer <laughs> um you know you hear if you turn on the tv at all you hear about shortages with baby formula and and milk and the the what the economy is doing you know with prices of everything and that's pretty much what's going on with the labor material and the labor on the construction side um everyone wants more money and it's not something i like to do but I've got to make sure that everything gets, you know, um, pushed along. So the material prices have gone up and the shortage of them is some of them we hadn't seen a lot. And now we're starting to see more of like concrete itself I, is really hard to get. But if you're doing a remodel, you don't need a lot of concrete. But that now I'm just starting to see um, there was a huge wood shortage, which there's more availability now. Um, a lot of the stuff, there's more availability, but the cost of everything has jumped exponentially. Um, and that's labor and material. And as much as everyone thinks that, okay, we don't have to push that. Well, unfortunately, that's what happens is we end up going, man, how much can we not charge? But bottom line is, is it's dictating to us right now where we're at. And uh, it almost doubled in price in a lot of cases. Agreed. Agreed. And I, and I was, people will always ask, is it worth doing it or whatever? And I, I'll tell people like, don't be afraid of it. If, it, if it's something that you want to do, um, a good contractor will, won't over promise and under deliver. And they'll just tell you what it is. And if you plan accordingly and you kind of know what it's truly going to look like, that's a big deal. So then 
if someone's going to do a kitchen remodel or a master bath remodel with timelines, what does that look like? And I know it, it totally depends on the house. And so I'm not holding you to this, but just in general. Uh, so let's just say kitchen. So if we're going to remodel a kitchen and you're like, I like my cabinet layout. Um, you know, I've got a shaker style door on there or whatever it may be. And I like that door, but I don't like my countertops. I don't like my backsplash. I'll leave all the appliances. You're looking at maybe a three to four week process. But if you need cabinets, plan on six to eight weeks minimum. And then depending on what you order, sometimes that even goes more. Um, a bathroom, like a master bath, really you're, you're basically done at four weeks, but then there's shower glass. So you're, that really drags on a little bit more, maybe four to six weeks. And, um, and then as far as if you do a whole house, if you can move out, do it for sure. And if you're staying in, that adds time. I'll just put it that way. But uh, a full house remodel would be minimum of a, of a 12 week process. Okay. Okay. And that's, I also think that's important to know because sometimes, again, contractors will come in and tell you what you want to hear. And then they're like, well, we're already in the house. And then the timeline is there versus just tell them like it is in the beginning and they can plan accordingly and, and make it happen. Yeah. I've also had clients, I know that um, when they know they're doing the remodel and their uh, their contractor will come in and they may not start for a couple of weeks, but they can order whatever they need ahead of time and, you know, just got to work all that out and, and what that looks like. And then it, the job can stay smooth. So that's good. Anything, what about when you're, I know you may do some office remodels for commercial or something like that. T same timelines you think when it comes to that? Um, that, that depends. I mean, a lot of times in the commercial, you don't have a lot of kitchens stuff like that. If you do kitchens, then those timelines extend even further because those cabinets are usually they're further out than that. There's a big um, delay on cabinets um, in general, but personally I have a cabinet maker that he gets them to me usually in about four weeks, maybe up to six weeks, you know, where the um, commercial cabinets will take up to three months. Oh, wow. So okay. But like you said, if you plan it accordingly, I know we're going to get this started, then you could get that built or start being built, you know, beforehand. So you don't have to get in and tear anything out yet, but it does, technically you're still in the job process and, you know, that's still time that you're plan or that you have to plan on it taking. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, we also have a lot of people that are new to the area they're moving in, they don't know contractors, they don't know who to trust. And so, you know, what should someone look out for when they're hiring a contractor? Um, there's a few things for sure. Um, number one is how many years of experience do they have? And a lot of guys, you know, they say, I have this many years of experience in the construction field. And let's just say that's 10 but they're 30 years old. Do you think they probably have 10 years of experience? You know, they, they probably were a laborer. They had this. So sometimes that 30 year old that says he has 10 years, he's got, you know, probably six to eight of the construction contractor experience, but that those are things to look at. You know, um, if you have two years of experience, there's a lot you haven't ran into. So <laughs> So that's a big question that I always ask in, or I would always want to be um, asked is how many years of experience do you have? And sometimes that will go into, well, how did you get started? That's another good question. You know, if you got started and worked your way up, then they tend to know the ins and outs of everything. Um, if, you know, if you went to uh, and got a degree, then you're going to know a lot of things about the construction industry. Um, and you're going to know how things work. You're going to know um, basically how the process goes. And one may not be better than the other, but they're different. You at least get to know the experience side of it. And that's going to help you along the way to know how much you could lean on your contractor for the right answers or the answers that you may need. Um, and then what do they specialize in? If they specialize in landscaping, you probably don't want them doing a kitchen remodel. You know, so you just little things like that. Um, and then when they finish, is it a turnkey process 
when they leave, are they done and you're done? Or what do you have to do when they leave? Maybe they're going to leave all the finishing touches to you. What's included in that contract? You know, that those are just good questions to ask so you don't get blindsided. Okay. Well, which also leads, it feels like, it seems like everyone knows someone who had a contractor that just took off on them. So how do you think one should, and I know it's different on different jobs, but how, how should a contractor be paid? Um, I personally believe that there should be a draw schedule up front. Uh, I, because I'm in this industry, I think a deposit is almost necessary no matter what, because there's upfront money that goes out. Now that deposit should be depending on what the job is. You know, it may be 10%, it may be 20%. Um, if someone asks for 50% upfront, that's a for sure sign. You don't want them there in my opinion. Um, you know, 10 to 20%, there's a lot of overhead, you know, being able to get things moving. Um, and once you get started, if you know what your timelines are, you know what is going to be done, you know, well, the cabinets have to be ordered, stuff like that, that 10 to 20% is not going to be a big deal knowing that things are actually needing to be ordered. Um, but then also hold at the very end, hold 10% until you do the final walkthrough, everything is done. No one wants to lose out on money on either end. And so a good contractor will be like, well, oh, I'm gonna take my, or keep that 10%. That's just, you know, gonna come back to me when we do that final walk. It's a good, all right, here we go. Everyone's satisfied. Um, that, that would be a good way for me to look at it. Um, people do look at it a little differently. Um, I do know, you know, reparable companies that will, get you know maybe 20 or 30 percent up front that is something that um i think you're getting a little bit iffy depending on how well you know this contractor you know how it's been recommended stuff like that okay okay um i think that's super helpful for everyone is there anything else that maybe on the remodeling side we should know or we didn't ask um i would say if you're doing a kitchen remodel one big thing that i try to let people know is it's going to be more hassle than you think it will be. <laughs> um, if you have another bathroom and you're doing a master, that's not a big deal. But most people don't have two kitchens. So you have to try to figure out how are we going to eat? You know, are, are we going to be able to maybe use a grill most of the time? Maybe, you know, um, eat out sometimes. Where are we going to wash dishes? So those are things that you at least need to know beforehand that they need to be discussed um not only with uh maybe a, a husband and wife or you know just a couple that lives together whatever it may be they need to discuss it but also that needs to be discussed with your contractor to see how they may be able to help them that's perfect and that's things that most remodelers might not talk about so i just thank you for being so candid and sharing that because that helps everyone plan and do better so planning helps the whole job. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mike. I really appreciate you. And um, uh, again, thank you the way that you always take care of everyone. And I, I appreciate you sharing everything with us. All right. Thank you, Rob.